Welcome to VGK Today, presented by MGM Rewards, a daily podcast bringing you an inside look at the Vegas Golden Knights 2023 Stanley Cup playoff run. I'm Justin Russo with the Golden Knights on Memorial Day on Monday, May 29th. And tonight, the VGK are in Dallas for Game 6 of the Western Conference Final against the Dallas Stars. Vegas couldn't get over the hump in Games 4 and 5 to eliminate the Stars, but they'll see if they can do it on the road tonight. Now, we hear so much from the players and the coaches during a series on different adjustments and on how things are going, but we don't often hear from those in the front office at this time of year. So to give us that perspective today, Dave Gosher sat down with Golden Knights General Manager Kelly McCrimmon. Krim, the team right now sits a game away from going to the Stanley Cup final. Uh, I'm curious, at this time of year, general manager, you've done so much of the work. You've got your team. What is it you do at this time of the year on a day-to-day basis to help this team try to get the where you want to go? Well, when when the playoffs begin, you're you're really uh, fully vested in that. Your ability to do much in terms of roster, that type of thing, is uh, very limited. Fortunately, uh, we've had good health. Uh, You know, we've got... Real good players uh, not in our lineup right now, so we're in a good position uh, that way. Our taxi squad has been running adjacent to uh, our rink at City National uh, ever since the playoffs began, so uh, those things are all in place. Our uh, amateur staff are uh, working hard with their preparation for uh, the entry draft, which uh, you know was under a month away uh, at this point, so they had their uh, year-end meetings uh, last week they did those by uh, by Microsoft Teams, so we were able to sit in on uh, those when we were here for uh, games three and four. Uh, you know, there's there's 29 teams, 29 general managers that are working on other things. So, not that you can uh, stay focused or committed to doing all of those things that uh, that those those people might be. Uh, you do have to kind of be aware of the bigger picture stuff and uh, live in the day to day, which uh, you know at this time of year is pretty stressful. I was going to ask you about the nerve-wracking part of it. You know, Shane watches the game one way. I probably see it a little different way. Yourself and George, if, if I was going to have the third seat next to you watching a game, what would I see? Um, well, you know, I, I've always felt playing and coaching are easier in uh, these types of situations because you're actively involved and have uh, impact on, uh, on the game and on the outcome. When you're watching, you're, uh, you know, a little bit... Uh, helpless in terms of that and uh, you know the stakes are high right we uh, uh, you know we lost our first game of the playoffs against Winnipeg they played really well against us and you know automatically that uh, you know raises concern you got to get back to your game even the first period of game two in the Winnipeg series they were better than us and then you know you really start to worry and then you know our team played real well you uh, you know we're at the the long overtime game uh, in Winnipeg in game three those are uh, those are not easy games uh, to watch. We're able to win game four, or game five, and get through that series. And then, you know, Edmonton is uh, is a great hockey team. And, um, you know, game one, we played really well in one. Game two, they were the much better team. Game three, uh, we were able to uh, find a way to win. And then uh, game four, they were uh, much better than us. So it came, uh, you know, down to game five in uh, Vegas where we, uh, played really well. We were down after one. We had the two quick goals, I guess three quick goals in the second period. And uh, you get feeling, you know, a certain level of comfort. Well, then we take a major uh, going into the third period. So I remember that particular game, the, the final faceoff, I think, was with uh, 4.2 seconds left. And uh, right until you won that faceoff, did you, did you ever feel that you could relax? Because that's how dangerous a team uh, that was, and then we went to Edmonton for game six, and the interesting parallel to this series is we're in an identical p- position coming into Dallas for game six as we were going into uh, Edmonton for game six, and, uh, you know, not easy, an easy arena to win in. We were able to win uh, game six and uh, now sit here with a sim- similar situation uh, tomorrow night. What's been your read, Krim, on this series so far? You win the first three lose game four in overtime, then lose game five at home. How do you size up what you've seen so far in the first five games? Well, I think if you look at five games, it's probably uh, about where people would have expected that it would be. So um, the games have been close. There's been uh, three overtime games. Uh, you know, last night was 1-1 after 1, 2-2 after 2. You know, ends up being a, a 4-2 uh, final. And then I guess, uh, you know, the outlier to some degree would have been game three where we won 
uh, four to nothing. But uh, the series is close. It's two good teams. There's not a lot of uh, uh, room out there. I think you've seen, you know, uh, our team, their team at times uh, get that bounce that you need to get. And uh, that's uh, sometimes the margin of victory uh, when you've got two really evenly matched teams. Um, you know, the, the looking at it, uh, you know, more closely, what's unique about it is that we've won three, then they've won two. So that's, uh, you know, the biggest talking point now is, you know, we've got to get, uh, we've had two opportunities to, to uh, you know, end the series to eliminate our opponent, which we were able to do with our first opportunity against Winnipeg. We did it with our first opportunity against Edmonton. And, uh, you know, now we haven't done that on two occasions. Our next opportunity is tomorrow night. How quickly do you move on in scenarios like this? I mean, you're at where you're at, regardless of how you got here. How quickly do you turn the page? Well, it's important. Everybody says it, that uh, you can't get too high at this time of year. You can't get too low. I think that's accurate. I don't think that it's as uh, easy and as absolute as, uh, as we'd all like it to be. Um, but I think... You know, when, you, when you've got a mature team, you've got an experienced team, you've got good leadership, uh, you turn the page pretty quickly. And I, and I think that, uh, you know, even, you know, during good times in a playoff, I think that uh, our leadership, our coaching staff, uh, keep our team grounded. And I think uh, on the flip side now, when we're coming off a loss, uh, I think uh, it's the same group of people that uh, get us ready to play uh, tomorrow night. And you know, I feel that that's one of the strengths of our team is the makeup of our, uh, our our people in our dressing room. Is the makeup of the people the reason, Krim? It seems like you guys really haven't gone in any lengthy lulls this year. You've been able to, and you haven't gone on these tailspins, you've been able to turn it around pretty quickly. Yeah, the last one we would have went on would have been uh, late January where we uh, struggled going into the All-Star break. Since the All-Star break, um, you know, I don't know if we lost two in a row uh, till, uh, till this series. And, you know, it, it's... Uh, you know, teams do that for a reason, and I, and I think that the 82-game schedule, you know, the teams that can really avoid those lengthy losing streaks, because every team's going to have one or some uh, during the year, but the, the more you can keep them at two games or three games as opposed to six games or seven games, you know, that's how you make the playoffs, that's how you gain separation in a division, that's how you finish first in a division, uh, and in the Western Conference, like we were able to do uh, over the course of the regular season, and then at playoff time, uh, as I touched on, it's, it's quickly turning the page. It's understanding that the thing with playoffs, it's the same for both teams uh, in terms of the travel, in terms of the schedule. So a lot of those things in the regular season aren't the same. And, and that's what uh, you love about playoffs. It's a best of seven, which is a great test of determining who the better team is. The travel, the schedule uh, are the same. And one of the challenges is always for a team, you know, to match that level of desperation of your opponent. And when you... Uh, you know, have a team down two to nothing as we did coming into Dallas. You know, we expect game three is going to be their very best game. Well, you know, we were able to win game three, so that puts them in a situation where they're facing elimination. You know, you're going to get their best effort in game four. We saw it again, again in game five, and you know, that's going to be you know really a key for us is to bring our uh, highest level of urgency. And it's got a, it, it's a fine line. It can't be frustration it can't be desperation it's got to be urgency it's got to be determination it's got to be resolve it's got to be resilience resiliency it's got to be that understanding that you need to be ready for anything whether it's a bad call whether it's a bad bounce uh, you know whatever the things are that happen over the course uh, of a hockey game you've got to be ready for all of that and I think the more you prepare mentally the more uh, able you are to work your way through those things when they happen in a game. Lastly, Krim, fortunately enough for this organization, you've been on several deep runs in the playoffs, right? This is the fourth one in six years. Um, what have you learned from the previous three deep runs? What, what helps you in 2023 from the past? I think this is our deepest team. So, yeah. uh, you know, we've said, you know, before, I don't feel that we have a player that has to be the guy, but we've got a lot of players that could be the guy. So I think that's, uh, you know, comforting. You know, I think, you know, some of the players that were part of those playoffs as younger players are now, you know, that much better. You know, when I, uh, you know, the first two that come to mind for me are, uh, you know, Zach Whitecloud and Nicholas Haig, uh, how well they're playing, uh, you know, now as pretty experienced uh, playoff guys as, uh, as young players. So I think that's uh, uh, something that you draw on. And then you know, just the core group, the core group's got good leadership. You've got, you know, your Petrangelo's, your Martinez's, your Mark Stone's, your you know, your Smith, your Carlson, Jonathan Marshall, so, you know, Braden McNabb, those are real good pros, real good uh, NHL players. You've got Jack Eichel, 
who has uh, you know made such a great impression in his uh, first Stanley Cup playoff. He you know looks to um, you know just be really enjoying the moment, and uh, you know his game continues to grow uh, night by night. So you know you lean on people like that, and uh, uh, you know everyone has their own. Uh, contribution. Jonathan Quick hasn't played in this series, but Jonathan Quick's a Stanley Cup champion, a Conn Smythe winner. Uh, you know, in his own way, he adds uh, value and support to you know the guys that are playing. So uh, you know, Bruce casty has been in a final. Uh, you know, John Stevens has won two Stanley Cups uh, on our coaching staff. Uh, Misha Donskov, Ryan Craig have both been uh, you know uh, in the playoffs to uh, great degrees. Sean Burke's got as much experience as, uh, as all of those people. So that's, uh, that's the makeup of the team, and that's, uh, uh, you know, everybody will do their part to have our team ready to play tomorrow. Well, Krim, thanks for this. Uh, it's just the best time of year. Say hockey in all winter is great. Hockey in May and even June is even better. It's a good-looking game six. Thanks very much, David. I appreciate it. Big thanks to Kelly for taking some time to chat, and thanks, of course, to Dave for making it all happen. It's interesting to hear Kelly's perspective on watching games because – when you listen, he probably feels like most of the fans at home. I mean, whether you're a player or a coach, you can at least control the game to an extent and have an impact on it. But when you're a fan or, in Kelly's case, a general manager, that control doesn't exist, at least during the games. So for all the work that he and the rest of the front office put into forming the team, at the end of the day, it's up to those on the bench and on the ice to make things happen. And speaking of those in that position... Yesterday, we heard from head coach Bruce Cassidy and forward Riley Smith, who offered what their messages are to the team heading into game six. Get harder. You know, let's get serious and get harder about our, our puck management and our battles. After you go through the game, you see a little bit more of it when you could stop. Uh, slot battle, particularly Gary, our net front, we need to be a lot harder. We've got a big decor. They've got to play like it again. And then we've got to get inside in front of their net. Um, there's a couple opportunities, I think, in the old zone where we could have been greasier in front of their net where we're waiting a little on the outside. And there were some where, some where we did get there and had good looks. Um, but to me, it's, it's become a bit of a slot battle series now. There's always execution on each side. Discipline on each team the last two games has been very good. You know, you're not seeing a parade to the penalty box. It's a lot of five-on-five -five hockey. We've got to get better in the slot. I mentioned before just playing with a bit of a killer instinct. Um, you know, I think the last two games, our defensive game has just slipped a little bit and we're giving up great A chances that I don't think we were giving up in the first two rounds. Um, you know, I think it's it's easier to uh, plan a series when you're up three games to nothing. And, uh, you know, we don't have that, that fortune right now. So you have to make sure that this next game is a must-win game for us and we have to go in there with the mindset that uh, – we're going to limit them to, to very little and make the most of our opportunities. So the VGK looking for that killer instinct in Game 6, as Riley said, and let's see if they can have that tonight and avoid a Game 7, eliminate the Stars, and advance to the Stanley Cup Final. And as the VGK battle it out in Game 6, there will still be some fun had here in Las Vegas at the official Game 6 watch party this afternoon at Circus Stadium Swim. The party starts at 4 p.m. with puck drop at 5, and it is free admission to anyone wearing Golden Knights gear. So be sure to grab your favorite VGK shirt, jersey, hat, you name it, and come down to Circus Stadium Swim this afternoon. But do note that this is only open to those who are 21 and over. There will be some great giveaways of tickets to an upcoming playoff game, as well as a giveaway of a game-worn gold helmet from William Carrier. So be sure to get down to Stadium Swim this afternoon at 4 p.m. for the official watch party for Game 6 between the Knights and the Stars. Before we go today, I'll remind you quickly to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts so you don't miss a moment of the team's quest for the Stanley Cup right here on VGK Today. Tomorrow, we recap Game 6 of the Western Conference Final between the Knights and the Stars. Justin Russo signing off for episode 43 of VGK Today, presented by MGM Rewards.